amen, who know who God is, amen. I want you to stand on your feet if you can, amen, just to give God, amen, some worship, amen, and to give him some praise. I want to say happy Mother Day, amen, to all those that are in presence and for those that are not here, amen, in present. I pray that God will continue to bless you on your mother days to come amen let us pray father we just thank you so much that you have given us another chance another opportunity to come into your house of worship to acknowledge our wrongdoing father we we pray right now that you would just take full control of this service father i pray that you will keep us lord god as we give you praise glory and honor father we give you great honor for being here in your presence. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Let every heart say amen. 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 Come on, can you put your hands together and help us sing this song? Say God is my everything. Say God is my everything. He's my joy. He's my hope. He's my rock. A shelter. Say God is. God is. My everything. Come on, put your hands together. God is. God is Say God is. He's my joy. And he's my hope. He's my rock. Say God is, God is my everything. Say God is, say God is, he's my joy and he's my hope, he's my rock. A shelter. Say God is. God is. God is. God is. Say God is. God is. God is. God is. Say God is. God is. By everything. Come on and put your hands together. My everything, my everything, oh, 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 my everything, 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 my everything. My everything, oh, everybody clap your hands. My everything, oh, my everything, my everything, say God is, God is, God is, God is. Say God is, God is my everything. Hey, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. My everything. Oh, oh, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. 
Come on, you ought to clap with us. My everything. Oh, oh, oh. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. Say God is. God is. God is. God is. Say God is. Lord God is. My everything. I feel much better since I. I feel much better since I. I feel much better since I. I feel. I feel much better since I. I feel. I feel. I don't walk the same since I. I don't walk the same since I. I don't walk the same since I. I don't walk. I don't walk the same. I don't talk the same since I. I don't talk the same since I. I don't talk the same since I. I don't talk. I don't talk the same. Everybody clap your hands. Oh, say I tried him. Oh, I tried him. Oh, I tried him. Oh, I tried him. I tried him for myself. And I found him to be a friend of mine. Oh, I tried him. Oh, I tried him. Oh, I tried him. I tried him. Oh, 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 I tried him. Is yeah, I tried him. I tried him. Oh, I tried him. I tried him. Has anybody tried him? Oh, I tried him. 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 Can you help me say Jesus? Oh, say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Oh, say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Oh, say Jesus. Say Jesus. I've been the same since I I tried the Lord. I haven't been the same since I. I don't feel the same since I. I don't feel. I don't feel. Come on, certainly this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad. If you don't mind, come on, put your hands together. Let's give God great praise with your hands. <laughs> certainly God is good. He's indeed worthy to be praised. Let me also take this time uh, to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Amen. And I know for perhaps for some individuals, this some people this could also be about I, I want to be I didn't mention it but I think about I had to think about it uh, this season could also bring a wealth of emotions for some people who may have lost their mother and so let me tell you during this time we're also praying for you amen 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 uh, let me also take this time to want to see if there are any first time visitors visiting with us for the first time here at Mount Calvary if you don't mind just wave your hand at me I promise I'm not going to single you out I just want to recognize you any first time visitors any first time 
all right? Any probably reoccurring visitors, meaning you're not a member, but you show up. Come on, let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Let me say, once again, we thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us here. And it is our prayer that something is said or that something is done that you come up back. Amen. Amen. And even to those who's worshiping with us via live stream, let me also say welcome to the sanctuary of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Church, allow me to give you a few updates and I promise we'll go further in worship. Allow me to remind you this week and even on next week, uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, there will be no Bible study here on May 17th and the 24th. So I know some schools are in the midst of graduation season and I want to be very uh, sensitive to those uh, individuals, especially during these times of family. If you don't have a graduate, let me tell you, just spend time with your family. Amen. Amen. And listen, let me tell you, church, uh, life is short, life is fleeting. So this is a time in which we could just take the time to take a break and also celebrate our graduates. Amen. 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 On fourth Sunday of this month, fourth Sunday, May uh, 28th, we'll be celebrating Youth and Young Adults Sunday here at Mount Calvary. Amen. Amen. And with that being said, I want, I would like for every, you don't have to be necessarily a high school and or a college graduate. But if you want your uh, child or student to be recognized, if you could be so kind to send their name, their picture, what grade they're going to and what school they're attending to Mr. Landon Roberts, his email is on the screen. We want to highlight all of our students as we seek to celebrate Youth and Young Adult Sunday. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for me. Amen. <laughs> Listen, church, the children are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. We ought to do our very best to make sure we celebrate them while they are here. Amen. 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 Again, there's a lot going on in the summer months in the life of our church. And so Vacation Bible School, Vacation Bible School will be June 7th through the 9th from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're looking forward to having a great time in God. There will be something for all ages. And so I'm asking you, please, ma'am, please, sir, please mark your calendars accordingly. Also, there will be, a, again, we celebrate our church anniversary, 87th church anniversary on June 25th. Amen. 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 Uh, church, uh, allow me to again hear my heart. Church is even turning 87 years old. We're asking every member, those who can, to give a special gift of $87 above your tithes and offering. This is normally a time in which we kind of come together and we celebrate what God has done for our church on that particular Sunday. And so be very clear, uh, I admit, if you cannot give the $87, nobody's going to come looking for you or anything of that matter. Uh, and I want to be also very clear that if you can't give the $87, that's fine. If you can give your tithes and offering instead, and let the church say, give your tithes and offering. I, I'm saying that because there, I'm sure there are some individuals who may sometimes pick and choose what they want to give toward. And so I'm asking you, if, as your pastor, if you, you want to make my heart glad that Sunday, uh, again, there are some people who can do both tithes and offering and $87. If you can't give your tithes and offering, just turn to your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, he's talking to you. Amen. Amen. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. So listen, thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Listen, I, I want it to be understood. I want no misunderstanding. I don't want no misunderstanding. But again, there's a lot going on in the life of our church. Also, June, June excuse me, July 29th, uh, we'll be having our back to school bash. Back to school bash will, will take place again this year. Uh, I'm asking every member, those of you who can and will, to just give a special gift of $25. Every member, if you are a member, we're asking you to give a special gift of $25 as we seek to be a blessing to our students uh, in our church, but also specifically our students who are in this community. I'm sure there's some individuals who look forward to this. I understand uh, the Back to School Bash did not take place last year. We're trying to get kind of back on track, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so those of you who can and will, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, if you, when, as you give, all you have to do is designate it on your envelope, uh, what you want your offering, your gifts to go to. Uh, we'll make sure that everything is accessible and that your gifts will go to those designated areas. For those of you who give via time the same way, there should be a, uh, in the app, there should be an icon that lets you know you're able to give to the back to school bash. Amen? 
Amen. Well, church, it's time to give our tithes and offer to the Lord. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to give, listen, church, the Bible lets us know that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and those that dwell therein. And I'm going to ask, again, will you to be kind. That I, again, I understand this Mother's Day, but will you all also still have brought something to the Lord's house? I wish I had more amens than that. Let me say it. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, I know it's Mother's Day, but I, I would hope you brought still something to the Lord's house. Amen. Everything that you have belongs to God. God only asks of us to give God just a portion back of what he's given to us. And let me also be clear, church, so no one doesn't think I'm fussing. Uh, I admit you all have done an amazing job this year in your giving. So give yourselves a hand. And even during this summer months, and I know there are times when we go with the school, church kind of goes on vacation. Listen, church, I still need you to be consistent in your giving. There's a lot goes on. And so even though, uh, if you will, uh, although we may only see you on Sunday and Wednesday, listen, ministry still has to go on. And so those of you who may need it, who is in need of an envelope, feel free to raise your hand. One of the ushers will be more than happy to assist you with one of those who are giving via Tively, even online, you can give as well. Just download the Tively app and there you'll be able to give in a secure way. Are you ready to give? Amen. Amen. If you're ready to give, you don't mind, every head bowed, every eye closed, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to give. Thank you for every gift and every giver. And Lord, we pray that these gifts will be for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We're in the hands of our ushers. comes time now we, that we can go to God in prayer. We want to just take this time, even in the middle of our worship experience, where you and I can go to God in prayer. Even as I'm talking, those of you who have a desire to come closer to the altar, feel free to do that even while, I'm in, while I am talking. But I want you to know the good news of the God that we and I serve is that you and I serve a God in which we can go to God in prayer and the good news is that he hears our prayer. This morning, I'm going to ask Minister Terry Edwards to come, and I'm going to ask him to lead us to the throne of grace, where he can go to God on our behalf. Father, you know all of us by name. You know all of our problems. You know all about our shortcoming. You know all about our doubts. You know all about our truth. Father, you, you know exactly what we're facing. Father, there's nothing that you don't know about us. But Father, we come to this altar and we present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto thee. Father, I pray now that every problem that is in each every one of us that we are dealing with so harshly father we give them to you father because it's too much for us to control and it's too much for us to handle but father we plead the case at your altar father we come right now we pray that you will bless family that is facing crisis right now Bless family, Father, that is mourning from a lost loved one, which are a mother. Father, I pray right now that you will come right now, that you will give us comfort, 
that we will be able to cope with it and move on in our lives. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us when we don't even deserve them, but you did it anyway. Father, we thank you for the way that you have been opening it for us. Lord, we thank you when we didn't deserve it, but you did it anyway. Father, we thank you for the strength that you've given, in, given us in our bodies, in our minds, in our heart, which we don't deserve, but you've given it to us. Father, we thank you this morning. On this morning, Father, we pray that you would take everything that you see, that you know that's not like you. Father, I pray that you remove it right now. Father, give us clarity, understanding to know, Lord God, that you will be with us now until the end. Father, we glorify your name and we honor you this morning because we are standing in your strength. We're not standing in our own strength, but you give us strength to be able to stand in your presence. And Father, we pray now that as you go forth in this second service, Father, I pray that you will lay hands on Dr. Parks. Father God, that you will give him strength in his heart, that you will give him strength in his mind, that you will build that character of holiness, that he will proclaim your good news to all of us who are wondering and all of us who are facing crisis. Father, we honor you right now. We praise you right now. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. amen. I made it. I 
I made it through. I made it through. I made it. I made it. Another day. I made it. Through it all. I made it. Another day. God kept me here. Get the man a great hand. They've led us a great way in worship. To all of our musician staff, to you, my father's children. If you don't mind, bow your heads for a word of prayer. So we ask God to bless our time in the word. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to worship again your name. Lord, as we seek to give inspiration and revelation, Lord, we pray that you speak right now. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to continue in our series entitled Down for the Calls. With that being in mind, I want to call your attention to the gospel recorded label Matthew. Matthew chapter 28 it is in your hearing. I want to commence reading at verse 16. Matthew 28. Starting at verse 16, this is how new, the, new living, the New Living Translation reads this way. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit teach these new disciples to obey all the commands i've given to you and be sure of this i am with you always even into the ends of the age this is the word of the lord you may be seated i want to talk about with your help and prayers this simple thought the mission the mission. Stories told about James Montgomery Flagg, who was born in 1877. The name for many of us may not ring a bell. In essence, James Flagg was a secular artist. Most of his early drawings from the age of 12 were exhibited in many magazines and others. He went on to have an illustrious career. He was known as an incredible artist and a credible painter. But perhaps his most famous drawing was not seen in a museum. It was not adored by numerous newspapers, but he is known for when the world went to War War I. When our world went to World War I, he was commissioned to share what the nation was trying to do through his gift of art. Therefore, he drew a painting that is now iconic. It was a picture that showed a man that was playing the role of Uncle Sam. None of the picture that you see, Uncle Sam, you see the inscription that says these words. It said this, the U.S. wants you in the U.S. Army. 
again, that description said, I, I, I want you in the U.S. Army. In essence, it was an enlistment poster that says, I want you in the U.S. Army. Church enlistment was important during the days of World War I because for war to take place, many had to sign up. People had to be chosen. and People had to be drafted into the Army. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, there's some practicality that you and I can learn from this story because here the army was asking for others to sacrifice their life. They were asked to sacrifice their freedom so that others can live a life of freedom. And that is what happens re really in the life of a believer. We're chosen that all of us who bear the nation or bear the name of Christians are asked to serve in God's army. And here is the good news. There, there's room at the, the Lord's army for all of us. And here is the good news that there's room in the Lord's army for all of us. There's room, I'm saying, for you to sing. There's room for you to worship. There's room for you to be a witness and a worker in the Lord's house. There's room for all of us. Here in essence, God is enlisting you and I to carry out his gospel into the world so that others will believe that others will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yes, I want to contend that's really where we find Jesus and the disciples here in Matthew 28. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has already taken place. And here the disciples are waiting on some uh, un unidentified but pre-appointed Galilean hillside when they see the risen, resurrected Jesus approaching them. And when they see him, the Bible says that the disciples fell on their face and worshiped him. And in verse 17, Matthew notes that as they worshiped, some of them didn't believe that it was truly Jesus. The Bible says some of them doubted. However, Jesus continues to approach the disciples and entrust to them his mission to the world. And I know on the outside looking in, this appears to be a bad idea. I mean, think about the disciples are known to not get it right from time to time. But I've discovered that Jesus has always been in the business of using and enlisting finite men and women to be his messengers in the world. I'm saying here Jesus charges these men to be his witnesses. Let me tell you, church, Jesus is still in the business of using men and women, but we must be ready to accept his mission. I, I, I'm saying we must make sure that the great commission doesn't end up as the great omission. The question that I believe this text is asking, and I believe we must ask ourselves is what, in essence, what does it mean to be on mission? Here's the first thing you gotta understand. When you're on mission, you gotta believe the claim that Jesus makes. If you notice, notice verse 18, the Bible says, and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Here in this text, the great commission begins in verse 18. And it offers a bold declaration of the sovereign authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of context, allow me to say that verse 18 is not a commission, but rather it's a claim. Yet the commission God gives rests on this claim. That is to say, if, if verse 18 is not true, then verse 19 and 20 are meaningless. J just look at the text. The Great Commission begins with the declaration of Jesus. The Bible says Jesus has been given all authority and in heaven and on earth. Here Matthew makes the claim that Jesus has all power. Let the church say power. power. But I want you to know that this statement that Jesus has all authority is more than a de declaration of power. Power in essence gives us the ability to get things done. However, uh, Matthew says Jesus has 
all authority. Authority in essence means one has jurisdiction and freedom of action. It means the freedom or, or right to use power. Uh, for sake, some of you are not getting it. Let me see if I can illustrate it. Uh, in the sports world, great athletes, think about it, have the power. They have the ability to run down the field, run up and down a basketball court. However, think about it, there's always a referee that has the authority to restrict or penalize or even disqualify players. The referee, in essence, has the ability to trump the ability of the athlete or even the authority of an athlete. However, this isn't the case with Jesus Christ because Jesus claims over the whole universe that no instant replay, no commissioner or referee can rule over the authority that Jesus Christ has. Why? Because Jesus says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now notice the scope of his authority. Jesus says all authority has been given to me. Notice this statement, church, should suggest to you and I that if God has all authority, that means no one else has any. I, I know there's so many people who claim that they're king or that they're, that they're even more powerful than God. But here, Jesus debunks that whole reality and he helps you and I to understand that if God has all power, that means no one else has any. Why? Because he says, I have authority in heaven and on earth. That, that, that think about it, that statement in heaven is it, it's more than just about being over heavenly bodies. In essence, it's about being over spirit beings. Jesus says, he says, I have power over Michael and his angels and even Satan and his demons. That, that is to suggest both angels and Satan, think about it, has to submit to the authority of Jesus Christ. He, he says, I have authority over him. And then the Bible says, I have authority over the earth. And that's that thing over the earth. Think about it. It is more than about just land and sea. It's about God being about being over people and people groups. It's about people regardless of race, location, social status, background, or religion. In essence, think about it in Acts. Uh, God says to the apostolic company, he, he says, when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, he says, you shall be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and, the, and to the ends of the earth. And here in Matthew 28, here we have one of the, great, the greatest Christological statements of the New Testament. In essence, this is an unmistakable claim of the deity that permits no middle ground because Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. I, I, in essence, I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, that our mission in the world begins by believing the claim that Jesus makes. He says, all authority has been given to me. Here, Jesus here, he claims that his, his father has given him the power. That is, a, a, for lack of a better term, he's been given a power of attorney to execute divine sovereignty at his own personal discretion. And so here, Matthew 28, in essence, is a reminder that the prophecy of Psalm 2, verse 8, has been fulfilled. I mean, think about it. The Bible told us, he, the, the Bible, the psalmist says, Lord, ask of his anointing. He said, ask of me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. In essence, Matthew 28 is the verification that Jesus is who he says he is. Some of you are not catching. Let me see if I can help you illustrate this better. Uh, th those of you who are men, and you, those of you who are men in this church, uh, if, if you walk around in your household talking about I'm the man of this house, I'm probably going to almost surmise that you're not. <laughs> Why? Because uh, if you're really the man of the house, you don't necessarily have to say that. When I get to look at the thing about this text, I got to wondering, is, in essence, is that the case for Jesus? I mean, he, think about it, when you look at the text, he proclaims he has all power. But, I want, but if, if you and I be honest, this statement sometimes can cause you and I to question this statement. Because think about it, when you look at the world, there's so much going wrong. I mean, men and women getting gunned down. Inflation is on the uprise. Gun control is out of control. But I want to suggest that you and I ought not question the claims of Jesus based on the breaking news of the day. I'm saying that the proof that this claim is true is based on Jesus lived to make this claim. 
If you don't believe me, just read previous chapters. Jesus was portrayed, arrested, tried, convicted, sentenced, beaten, and crucified. But God raised him from the dead and resurrected Jesus and it lived to proclaim that all authority has been given to him. I'm saying if we're going to proclaim Jesus' mission, we must believe the claim that he makes. But then secondly, we got to obey the commission that Jesus gives. Notice around verse 19, this is what he says. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Notice, notice there's a singular imperative of the Great Commission. That, notice the phrase. He says, make disciples. Let the church say make disciples. In essence, a, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. It, it paints the idea, think about it, uh, most disciples during this time would follow the rabbi to be with him, uh, to learn from him, and as, a and as a result, become like him. And so as a student of the rabbi, when a graduate would be done with the school, he or she would be able to start their own school. But I want to inform you that this is not, in essence, the license that here Jesus gives to his disciples. I, in this text, Jesus here bids his disciples to go out and make disciples for him. And can I tell you, this is the assignment, this is the uh, assignment of the church. That is to say, we are called to the lost and to tell others that there's a seat at the table at God's table. Yeah, yeah, I know you and I live in a society that has been, has been excluded for many of us, but I want you to know we, that is our assignment, that you and I ought to go out and to tell others that there is a seat at the table for them. But let me also suggest this is not just a call to the select few. That is to say, every disciple is called and enlisted to make other disciples. If you're wondering what, what does the assignment look like, it first looks like this. He says, we ought to go, we ought to make disciples by going. Let the church say go. go. Notice the first words in verse 19. He says, go, therefore. Now, I think that's appropriate, I think, because think about when you look at, when you think of the word gospel, you can't spell the word gospel until you first spell go. I'm saying that before you tell somebody what the Bible says, the Bible says you ought to go. Now notice Jesus doesn't tell the, tell the world to come to the church. He bids the church to go to the world. I, I'm saying that you and I ought to be a going church for a coming Christ. And when we look at the, this text, the word go is not a command as if the disciples will be sitting on the hillside otherwise because Jesus would not have given that command if that was the case. But here, this call goes, go modifies the command to go and make disciples. Jesus says, as you are going, he says, make disciples. And the point that I believe Jesus is trying to make is that disciple making is to be the Christian lifestyle, not a ministry selective. Some of you didn't catch it. I'll say that again. I, I said making disciples ought to be a Christian lifestyle, not a ministry selective. He says, as you go, you ought to make disciples. In essence, he says, the, think about the task of making disciples. It's as small as your neighborhood. It can be as large as the billions of people in the world who has never heard of Jesus Christ. But verse 18 tells us we ought to take this saving message to the nations. I'm saying you ought to go to the crack house. You ought to be willing to go to the drug house. You ought to be willing to go to your neighborhood and tell someone that if God turned you around, you God can turn them around. I, I'm saying you have to go. Uh, but here he says we ought to make disciples by going. But then he also says we ought to make disciples by baptizing. Now notice verse 19. Here in verse 19 the writer teaches us. That in essence, baptism isn't a man-made tradition. That is to say that you and I can't reject at our own discretion. But Jesus says, after we make disciples, we ought to bark disciples by immersion in water in the name of the Godhead. That is the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That, that is to say that he's trying to help us to understand that the call of baptism is essential. Now, let me be clear. Uh, baptism doesn't save anyone. 
However, baptism is the public profession of an inward decision. That is, in essence, I'm saying in baptism, we identify ourselves with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But baptism is our statement of commitment to Christ, his church, and his cause. Here, this call of baptism reminds us that the mission of Christ cannot be accomplished by sheep stealing or membership transfer, but God desires his children to be saved. Listen, church, I'm trying to suggest we're not in competition with one another or other churches, but we are partners of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every time we get a chance, we ought to go and point the laws to Jesus. When others come to know Jesus, I want you to know it's never about us, but it's about pointing them to the only name that matters. I, I, I'm saying that you and I, we're not called to be spectators. We're not called to even to be the main character. We're just a supporting cast and that God is the star of the show. So some of you are not catching. Let me see if I can illustrate this better. Uh, a, a tour guide walked a group of visitors through a historic church edifice. Tour guy was pointing out this, was pointing out the beautiful architecture. He was pointing out historical events that took place there and the great, and how he was talking about how there was great dignitaries that came to worship at this wonderful edifice on numerous occasions. And after a great presentation, the guy confidently, confidently asked, are, are there any more questions? The witch of season lady raised her hand and said, yes, sir, I have a question. She asked, sir, when was the last time someone was saved at this church? Church, I want you to know on a high and holier level that I want you to know one worship is wonderful. Having a wonderful sanctuary is great. Is great. Having musicians is great. But I want you to know that stuff really doesn't matter. What matters is that anytime someone comes to Mount Calvary or let alone any church in the nation, what matters is that men and women, boys and girls come to know Jesus. I'm saying in the words of the hypnologist that, yeah, you may build cathedrals large or small. You may build skyscrapers grand and tall. You may conquer all the failures of your past, but you and I ought to remember that only what you and I for, do for Christ will last. The songwriter said, yes, you may seek fortune and fame. The world might be impressed with your great name, but soon the glory of this life will be passed because only what you do for Christ will last. I'm saying we make disciples by going. We make disciples by baptizing. But if you keep watching the text, the Bible says we also make disciples by teaching. If you believe it's around, believe the eight calls of verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. That in essence, he says, um, in a real sense, he says, I'm saying church, Becoming a disciple is not so much an event as it is a process. That is to say, we bring the lost to Jesus, or when we bring the new convert to the church through baptism, what I'm trying to also help you understand is that we bring them into the maturity by faithful and Christian teaching. The conversion process, in essence, church doesn't end with baptism. For it is just the beginning of a lifelong process of conversion that consists of primarily one act. And he tells us what that act is in verse 20. He, he says we ought to teach them to observe. L listen, church, again, wonderful music makes us feel good, but he helps us understand wonderful music doesn't make disciples. Okay, preaching may every now and then draw a crowd, but that doesn't make disciples. Having a nice sign or on the marquee is wonderful, but that doesn't make disciples. Disciples requires faithful biblical teaching. And notice the text. The text says we ought to teach them to observe all that he has commanded. Listen, church, we, in essence, I'm saying we don't have the editorial authority to change the script. But we must teach the full counsel. I'm saying the, the Bible in its totality. And I don't know about you, but when my time is up, I hope to end my ministry in the way that Paul ended his ministry in Acts 20. He says, I, he says, I want you to know that I'm innocent of the blood of all men. 
And if you need help to rephrase it, that's what he says, uh, if, if you die and go to hell, he says he wants you to know it's not his fault. Why? Because he says, I'm innocent of the blood of all men. Why? Because I want you to know I didn't hesitate to proclaim to you the whole counsel of the Bible. Jesus says, when you teach, he says, don't teach so much that people will know it, but you ought to teach it that they will do it. I, I, I'm saying that notebooks full of biblical information doesn't make true disciples. He says we ought to teach them to observe. In essence, he says teach them to obey, teach them to practice, to live all that I have commanded you. James 1.22 says that we ought to, you and I, ought to be doers of the word, not just mere hearers only. I know this sermon doesn't really help you, but let me see if I can try to help you understand the sermon a little better. There's a story told of a young lady who was cleaning dishes from lunch, and as she was cleaning the dishes, she looked outside the window and saw her eight-year-old nephew, her, her, excuse me, her eight-year-old neighbor, who was running out of his yard to her yard up the steps, see if there was any essence, any goodies that he could steal. But that morning, the lady's husband had just repainted the back steps Therefore, the lady saw the young man running out of his yard to her yard, and she, she decided to holler out the window, Johnny, don't come this way, just go around front. And without missing a beat, Johnny just kept charging forward and yelled back, don't worry, I'll be careful. Knowing Johnny, she, she said again, Johnny, the steps are wet. Don't go this way, just go around front and without missing a stride, Johnny yelled back, I'll be careful until the lady yelled at the top of her lungs and as firmly as she could. She said, Johnny, listen to me, stop. Don't go this way, go around front. She, she said, Johnny, I, I don't want you to be careful. I want you to be obedient. Church, I'm trying to get you to understand on a high and holier level. Jesus is telling us that you and I cannot become a mature, faithful, and fruitful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ if you and I are finding ways to be careful in disobedience. I'm saying you must practice. He says, observe, live, do, and obey all that he has commanded. I, I'm done. I know many of y'all got, I know Mother's Day plans or even Mother's Day brunch or some of y'all, I know y'all got, y'all want to go get a mimosa. I do too, so I, I understand. There's one more thing I want to tell you. Uh, he, I, he says, he says, if you're going to do the mission right, he, he says, you got to believe the claim Jesus makes. You got to obey the commission he gives, but then finally he says you got to embrace the comfort Jesus shares. Notice verse 20, and I'm done. He says, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded. He says, Lord, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Here, Jesus, here, he offers the fact. He says, I will be with you. Jesus, in essence, declares, he says, I am with you. He says, before you go on your mission, Jesus says, I will be with you always until the end of the earth. Listen, church, you and I can carry out the mission of Jesus with the insurance that we have his personal and perpetual presence. I I'm saying we have his personal presence with us. He, he says, I am with you. And you know, when I got to thinking, it's interesting how this book, meaning the gospel of Matthew, opens and ends. Think about it. Matthew 1, he says, And the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, that is God with us. And now Matthew in, Matthew's gospel ends with Jesus, the Emmanuel, saying, I am with you always. He says, I'm with you when you go gather together, and I'm with you as you go out. And this is good news, friends, that we carry when, that when we carry out the mission of Jesus, we carry it out with the power and the presence of Jesus. He says, when we go forth carrying out the mission, that, 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 that's not only divine sovereignty on our side, but the good news is that we have divine sovereignty by our side. He says, I am with you. He says, we have his personal presence, but then finally, he says, we have his perpetual presence. Notice, therefore, all inclusive statements in the Great Commission. First inclusive, Jesus declares in verse 18, he says, I have all authority. Second inclusive is in verse 19, he bids all the disciples to go to the nations. 
Third inclusive is in verse 20. He bids us to teach the disciples and to teach all that he has commanded. Then the fourth is in fourth inclusive is when God closes by assuring us that he will be with us all the days of our lives. I'm saying we not only go forth in our mission, but not only do that we have the presence of Christ, but we have the perpetual presence of Christ. I, I'm, I'm saying, church, whatever the Lord decides to assign for you to do, the good news is that you are never alone. I did a turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're never alone. I, I don't care what you've done last week, last year, this morning, or even just a few moments ago. He says, no, you are never alone. I'm saying he'll uphold you. He'll guard you. He will be with you. You heard me say it before, but I think it fits right here the songwriter said I've seen the lightning flash and I've heard the thunder roar he said I felt sin breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of Jesus bidding me to still fight on he promised never to leave me never to leave me alone he says no you're never alone no you're never alone he promised never to leave me never to leave me alone he says no you're never alone you are no never alone alone because he promised never to leave you never to leave you alone huh? the songwriter said the world's first winds are blowing huh? temptations sharp and keen huh? he says I have a peace in knowing huh? that my savior stands between huh? he stands to shield me from danger huh? with all my friends are gone huh? he promises never to leave me huh? He promises never to leave me alone. Huh? And that's all I'm trying to tell you huh? is that you're never alone. Huh? I did a turn to your neighbor this morning huh? and say, neighbor, huh? you're never alone. Huh? Let the winds blow, huh? but you're never alone. Huh? Let the storm rise, huh? but you're never alone. Huh? Let it sift you. Huh? from side to side huh? but you're never alone huh? no huh? never alone huh? I bid you good day when I tell you huh? you're never alone huh? because the good news is uh, huh? that God can uh, still use you huh? have I got a witness huh? some of y'all ain't got it huh? let me close it this way then uh, there was a professor uh, who stood uh, in front of his class uh, and he said, who wants uh, this $20 bill? Uh, everybody uh, raised their hand uh, and said, I want uh, the $20 bill. Uh, but then he ripped up uh, the $20 bill. Uh, he bought it up. Uh, he stepped on uh, the $20 bill and he said who now uh, wants the $20 bill uh, nobody uh, raised their hand uh, but there was a one young lady uh, in the back of the room uh, she said I want the $20 bill uh, he said why he said because uh, it still has its value uh, I bid you good day when I tell you uh, you might been ripped up uh, you might been stepped on uh, but the good news is uh, you still uh, have value uh, come on turn to your neighbor uh, tell your neighbor neighbor we're about to go home uh, but say neighbor uh, you still uh, have value uh, come on some of y'all ain't moved yet uh, Turn, oh, turn, oh, turn one last time to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he can use you. Oh, that's all I came to tell you. He used Abraham. He used Isaac. He used 
Jacob. He used Joseph. He used Esther. He used Solomon. That means he can use you too. He used Solomon. He used Jeremiah. He used Zachariah. He used John the Baptist. He used the 12 disciples. He used old Judas. He used old Peter. You want to tell the Lord, Lord, you can use me. So you want to go home today and this ought to be your prayer. Use me, Lord, in that service. Draw me nearer every day for I'm willing to run on all the way but if I falter in my trying do not get angry just let me stand for I'm willing to run all the way good day Mount Calvary may the Lord bless you real good but I'm going to trouble you one last time and just turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you are never alone I'm saying you are never alone because he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other shall ever know I know somebody in here you may be grieving today can be a bittersweet moment so I dare to just turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you're never alone come on put your arms around somebody and say neighbor you are never alone I say you're never alone I trust in God wherever I may be out on the land or out on the raging sea come what may from day to day my heavenly father watches over me he makes the rose an object of his care he guides the eagle through the pathless air and surely he will remember me that's what I'm going to leave you with by saying he will remember you I said he will remember you Rihanna he will remember you Minister Edwards he will remember you Chi Chi he will remember you Amanda he will remember you Miss Tyre he will remember you is there anybody here no we serve a God who will remember you if you know he will just turn to your neighbor just one last time and say neighbor whatever it is tell them be not dismayed whatever beside you tell them God will see you through he will see you over he will see you around lean everyone upon his breast he will take care of you is there anybody here know that he will if you know he will just lift up your hands and say Lord I'll go if I gotta go by myself I'll pray if I gotta pray by myself I'll serve if I gotta serve by myself ain't he alright I said ain't he alright 
if he's all right can you say yeah say yeah Just turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'll go. Just tell your neighbor one more time. Uh, I know I got to quit, but just turn to your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, I'll go. Now just lift up your hands toward heaven one more time uh, and say, Lord, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. commands you to go this is not a job for a select if you if you are a believer he says you ought to go he said it's not gonna be easy he said because like he knows it's not gonna be easy he says I got assurance for you. He said, yeah, I'm going to be with you always. Even to the ends of the age. If you don't mind, if you're in the sanctuary, if you don't mind standing on your feet. I'm going to take this time to open the door of God's church and someone, someone here today may need to make a decision to make Jesus Christ their choice. If you don't mind, let's sing that together. Lord, I'm available to you. I'm my will. My will I give to you. How do us you say do use me Lord to show someone the way and enable me to stand my storage is empty and I am a Let's sing it one more time, Lord. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord, to show. Someone the way and enable me to send my story. Very softly, I don't want to rush through this particular segment. Maybe someone here really needs to make a decision. And I hear you in your own mind, you just wish a reverend would just please hurry up. Listen, church, this is really why we have church. Someone really here really may needs to make a decision. And I'm here, you like reverend, I don't like crowds. Well, listen, you can feel free to see any of these leaders up front of myself. We don't mind sharing with you. 
as to how you can make Jesus Lord of your life or even as to how you can unite with this church. So if you don't mind, just every head by there, every eye closed. I just want to pray that if someone needs to make a decision, God gives them the strength to make a decision. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us to understand, help us to understand that we got a marching orders, that we got to go and make disciples. And so, Lord, bless my brother and my sister who may need to make a decision. Lord, let them know that they're not amongst judges, but they are amongst friends. And Lord, let them know that this is good ground to be planted. And we promise when they decide to make a decision, we won't glorify ourselves, but we'll ultimately give your name the praise. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you don't mind, put your hands together. Give God great praise with your hands. Come on, keep standing. Keep standing. If you don't mind, keep standing. We're getting ready to go. Uh, again, again, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. and We pray that you enjoy your special day. Amen. Amen. Please be mindful. Again, there's no Bible study on this coming week. Uh, again, please enjoy this time with your family and even those who are graduating. I want to personally say congratulations to all of you. Amen. 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 Hopefully every mother should have received a flower. Again, that is just a small token that we just want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Amen. If you have it, I'm sure there should be some still around somewhere. Uh, please feel free to see some of the ushers. I think most of them maybe have them. Uh, but again, as you get ready to leave again, I pray you have a safe weekend and looking forward to seeing you all on next week. Amen. If you don't mind, receive this blessing. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may rest, reform, and renew this day. And the days ahead until we meet at Jesus' feet, the bishop of the church, the bishop of our souls. Go in peace. Go and love, go and serve. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Mother's Day. Be blessed. <laughs>